Hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> this is my second attempt here of doing this. Hopefully it works this time. Uh, welcome to an impromptu, not what's in the press, but what's in the short box. That's right, what's in the short box. I have been, um, I'm checking my live feed here to make sure it's working. Yes, it is good. Uh, I, uh, I've been working all day uh, on comics, obviously. Uh, I did a whole bunch today, actually. I'm quite happy. I, I did. I made some good progress today. I was feeling under the weather for most of the week, to be honest. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I was, yeah, I don't know if it was a heat or whatever, but I was had some uh, pretty bad migraines, and I couldn't get a lot of work done, but today I was feeling good, so I was very happy to to finally get to work. And you know what? I, 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 I Whenever I work, I always come across my own short boxes, and I always poke, you know, look through it, and I'm like, oh, look. I have this book or I have that book, books that I've picked up over the last several years, going back probably 10 years, uh, going to the Toronto comic book show, the Toronto fan expo, you know, I'd sit up at the Toronto comic book show. Oftentimes I met a lot of you local people there, actually a lot of my, my uh, long-term clients there. And I, I, you know, I'd, I'd peruse the books too, and I'd find a book here and there. And over time you pick up a book here, you pick up a book there and I come home and I say, I'm going to have this book pressed and clean and sent off to CGC. I put it in a short box and I, I forget or I get busy with other work and so I have a short box here <sighs> I'm gonna go through some of these today I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because there's probably you know 75 books here I'll, I'll just kind of rummage through it and pick ones that you know grab my attention I think you're gonna be pretty impressed with some of the books that I I do have and I want to try to find you guys online here because if you're if you if the chat's going I think the chat's going um, I want to be able to see what you're saying and I can't, I have no screen right. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah. Oh, there's Stavros. Hey Stavros. Yeah. My son's, my son's actually had a sleepover today, so he's not uh, going to be on here, uh, offering a thousand dollar gift certificates, right? Thanks Stavros. Actually the, 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 the chat's right there. I can move this over here and I can see it a bit better. There we go. Let's see what's in the short box. All right. Well, right off the bat, look. You know, right there, a nice copy of Conan 24, first appearance of Red Sonja. Not bad. I don't even know where I got this one from. Um, nice one here. A nice copy of Batman and Robin 232, first Raza Ghoul. I know where I got this book. I, I, I bought this book off of Guardian Comics out of Pickering, Ontario, off of Jim. Yeah, and this is probably a, it's probably an eight and a half, nine, not bad. Nice high grade uh, copy that I'm glad to have. A book that I, I think I've had for four or five years <laughs> sitting in my short box. And there's also some duds in here too, guys. I'm just going to pass the duds. You know, like, look. What's that? I don't even know what that's doing in there. But, anyways, let's see. Hey, Colin. Oh, like, look at this. And I have no idea where I picked this book up. I have no clue where I grabbed this book. You know, and it's it's a nice one. That's that's a, a nine eight contender, and it's just sitting in my short box. Now you guys are gonna be mad at me here, because I never thanks, I never store books like this usually. And these books came out of a collection years ago, and they've been sitting in this box. And I feel terrible that they're not bagged and boarded, and they're not bad condition either. Look at this. Look at that. Look at how look how sweet that is. Makes a Spider-Man 58. This baby here, eyeballing it right now. Oh, it's got a pretty pretty bad bend down the back. But I can fix that up. That's probably a seven and a half, eight when I'm done with it. Maybe an eight and a half. Okay, that's something. Oh, and another one right there. Look at that. So early Spider-Mans. <laughs> Power pack number one. You never know. You never know. Let's see what else I got in here. Oh, look at that. Another hot book right now. Another X-Men 244. You know what, guys? I might sell some of these books. I, I don't know if I will or not. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are around or not. Next Friday, August the 13th, uh, Roy from Roy's Paper Heroes and myself and uh, a few others are going to be having another claim sale at the office uh, next Friday, I'm not sure of the exact times yet. I'll, I'll post something on Instagram and on my Facebook page. Uh, what do we got? Oh, look at this. Nice Deadpool number one. These are nice books. And these are all really nice high, 
high grade copies too, which is great. What else? What else? Oh, look at this. Still in its baggy. Ultimate Fallout. I should move over. Well, I can't really move over because then I can't. Wait, I'll go like this. There we go. Ultimate Fallout 3. Now, this one, I know I picked this one up from... Uh, I picked this up from a friend of mine, actually, in Whitby. And I paid $20 for it about five years ago. 20 bucks. He had a whole bunch of them, and he was selling them for 20 bucks a piece. Not bad. And again, I haven't done it. It's still in the, still in the poly bag. I haven't even taken it out yet. Um, what else? Nice copy of ROM, number one. I mean, it's not a super huge book, but it's one that's uh, everyone's, you know, coming around. Well, you're not getting it, Stavros. It's the only copy I have. That's all I've got. Oh, look at this. Marvel Premiere number one. Again, yeah, just things I pick up. Here and there. Oh, some more Spider-Man books. Oh, yeah, look at this. Nice copy of Amazing Spider-Man 24. Like just, I don't know where these books even came from. But I'm not complaining. I'll take them. Number 99. Nice King, Kingpin issue. 51. Now, there was a time when I was collecting... I was going for a full run of Spider-Man. I almost had a full run of Spider-Man. Uh, I probably had from issues... 20 all the way up with a few under 20 but like i'd you know like i'd like one six uh you know 13 14 15 and then i jumped up to like you know 20 and up but i had them all and then i traded them all away because i was sick and tired of lugging around long boxes of, of my collection right so what's that oh another spider oh another nice spider-man book Ooh. oh look at that <laughs> i'm seeing stuff i didn't even see before Okay, guys, don't get mad at me. Here's some more that are not bagged and boarded. Second Scorpion, number 29. Nothing wrong with that. I'll put that over here. Second appearance of the Rhino. And these books are not bad. These are all going to be mid-grade books when I'm done pressing and cleaning them. They're probably going to be, you know, uh, seven, six and a halves. That's not bad for these old uh, ASM books. Oh, $100 for my Ultimate Fallout 3? Let me think about it, uh, Stavros. Let me think about it. Um, Nah. <laughs> no way. Uh, whoops, there we go. 32. ASM. These are nice books. Uh, what else do I got? What else do I have? Oh, okay. We, oh, look at this. Where did I get this one from? It's not in great shape. It's a first appearance of Silver Age... Of Aquaman, Showcase. What showcase is it? Number 30. Showcase 30. I've got a CGC copy of this as well, but it's the next, it's a spare copy of the first Aquaman. I would sell this one because I have already have another copy somewhere. Uh, oh, wow. Stavros is missing only ASM number five for a full run of one to 700. 700. Unfortunately, there are all issues under 15. Oh, you're missing five. Five. I thought you meant, I thought you meant issue number five, but you're missing five issues under, under 15. The question is, which ones are you missing? Like the first Goblin, which has gone crazy. Of course, the first Electro, the first... Uh, oh, they're all big, right? All those, all those early books are, you know... I had a first Doc Ock. I picked up two years ago, and I regret moving it. I should have hung on to it, and I... I I found it at a toy show in west of Toronto. I was out there in that area of town. It was on Thanksgiving weekend two years ago or three years ago now. And this guy was a, was a toy dealer. And he had comic books. And he had all these modern Spider-Man. And he was asking crazy money for the for the mod, like first Venom and all that. But he had number two. And he was asking like 200 bucks or something like stupid. I grabbed it, obviously. And I sold it really quick. And I shouldn't have because it came back at 2.5. Um, yeah. They're hard to come by once you lose them, these, these books. How isn't that bagged and board? Don't get mad at me. I don't know why. I pick it up and I, I threw it in here and I didn't bag and board. I put them aside now. I'll throw them in bags and boards tonight. I promise. Here I am telling everybody to bag and board their books and I'm, I'm guilty of not doing it myself. Check these guys out. Oh, yeah. And they're nice high grades. Captain America 100. Look at that. I don't know if you can see how nice this is. 
I haven't worked on these books, so these books are all non-pressed. But look how clean that one is. Is that a dust shadow there? Yeah, it's got a bit of a dust shadow on the on the one side here. But I know how to get rid of that now, so that's not a problem. And look at this one here to go along with it. First, look at this nice first falcon. Really clean. It's nice. Wow, you picked up a ASM 1485 for only 1800 That's a deal. Mine's a 6.5. Uh, wow, but that's a great deal for an 8.5. What else do I got? Look at this. Nice Marvel team up number one. I love that copy with the Human Torch. This one actually has one of those acrylic. Ever check these out? The hard acrylic. The hard acrylic uh, clear boards. You can get these from the same guy who uh, I get all my bags and boards from. They're not cheap though, but look how cool they are. Nice and nice and sturdy. And you can see the back. I love that you can see the back cover as well. Beautiful. But they're not, I think like almost like 50 cents or a buck a piece. So it's pretty pricey. What else do I have in my long box? Here's an old Golden Age book. An old Daredevil Golden Age number 62. Something different you don't see all the time. Oh, that's, yeah, I, may, I guess it was years ago. Oh, look at this. I didn't even know I had this. And this is not a bad copy. It's probably like an eight and a half, nine. So I'm quite happy I have that because I thought I didn't have another copy of 194. I sold my 9.8. Well, I traded my 9.8 last year and I'm, I missed that book. I shouldn't have done it. Right, what do we got here? X-Factors. Got to have X-Factors. What else? Thor... Here's a nice copy, not bagged and boarded, of Logan's Run. That's not too bad. That's a, that's a sharp copy, actually. That's probably like a 9.4. Nice. That's not too shabby. What else? I'm just going quickly through it. I'm almost done here. Nothing. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, look at that. Those are all right. Oh. Yeah. That's not a bad copy. Black Panther number one. Not in bad shape either. This is, this is great. <laughs> My light twos and fullbacks. Yeah. Have you tried have you have you tried those clear acrylic boards? Uh, they, they, they are really nice. Another copy of uh I didn't even know I had this, and I'm so happy I do. Uh Canadian Canadian copy of Thor 337. Probably like a nine. Yeah, that's a nice shape. Probably like a nine four when I'm done with this one. Not bad. What else do I got? What else? Do, oh, okay. Oh, that's all right. That's gotten hot. First uh, Omega Red. I have no idea where I got that from. Nothing wrong with that. That's hot book right now. And a few more to finish us off, guys. I've got, uh... oh yeah, Star Wars number two. A nice copy of that. There was a time when that book went kind of crazy there for in terms of value, price-wise. Nuts. So Star Wars number two. <laughs> a cup. what's this? Turtles, that's not a big book, I don't think. Is that another number? And finally, to go along with the Star Wars stuff, they, the, and again, I had no idea I even had these. The number 42. And these are probably like mid-grade books, I would think. Yeah, this book's probably going to be like an eight and a half, nine maybe when I'm done with it. There's nothing wrong with that. And, is it, oh, and, it's, and it's a UPC as well. Where, there we are. That, is that, that the Canadian one, I think? UPC Canadian. I think both of these are. And I have the 68 to go along with it. So nothing wrong with that. Things I picked up at the show, guys. Things I picked up at the shows, like I said, uh, over the years. And just put away. And forgot about. And when I go back. And I'll probably put most of these away again. And maybe I'll forget them again for the next, for the next, uh, you know, <laughs> 10 years or so. I have no idea. With the amount of comic books I have here right now to work on. 
there's no way I'm going to get to these books anytime soon. Probably not until maybe the winter time. Hopefully the winter I'll, I'll dedicate, a, you know, three days and just do like maybe 30 of my own books and send them in. I have some books that are just kind of ready to go that are, they're not, they don't require press that I, I will send in. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot here that I wanted. That, 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 that first Raza Ghoul, what it's gorgeous, man. Look at this. Yeah, it's a nice looking book, man. I'm looking forward to getting that one. I love this. I love these these early Batman and Robin books. I absolutely love them. So you know what? That's just going to the shows and picking stuff up. And again, I didn't pay crazy money for this stuff because this is like, I'm talking. These are like as as long as as far as eight years ago. Some of these guaranteed. What do we got here? I've been going after that one too. Oh, the Black Cat. Yeah, I love that Black Cat. I had that nine eight Black Cat. Ugh. I had two of them. I had three. I had a two nine six. Uh, sorry, I had a nine six, a nine eight, and another nine eight. And I so I sold the nine eight as soon as I got it back. I let it go to Batcave, took it, and then um, the other nine six went with a, with a trade. And then the other nine eight was my last one last year, and I let it go towards a, a trade for a Hulk number one. But since I let it go, the 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 nine eight, the ASM one ninety fours have like tripled in value. And I'm like, oh, I don't know, not good uh never do they protect the book well i think they do do they need to be changed out i don't believe so they're 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 acrylic like um museum grade acrylic it's the same company i don't know if i have one of their bags here no i don't have one of the or or do i oh right here this guy this company the pro line the comic pro line right this guy uh imports these the uh, acrylics as well and they're really i'm telling you they're nice and thick. Like they're thicker than a point. Like I use 0. 0.50 boards when I when I do when I send books back to people after I'm done pressing them. Uh, these are I think 0. 0.75 acrylic. They're thick, man, and uh, they're nice and sturdy. Someone once told me that if there's humidity in the room, they could stick to the comic. But I don't. I've never had that happen. I, I've I heard that early on, but I'm not hearing that now. And they're the thing is they're very expensive. But if you have books that are not say worth sending in to get graded yet. That's an alternative, you know, spend the dollar on a board, put it in a nice MyLite uh, 2 that you use, and that book's going to, you know, you can check the back and the front of the book out, which I like. And, the, and it's not cardboard, it's not paper, so it's not going to, even if it's acid-free, it's not going to deteriorate over time. So um, I, I don't use them readily, but I, I do have a few that I bought books in, and I do like them. I do like them. Um, oh, you want to see some of the bad ones that are in there? <laughs> okay, I will. I'll show you a couple of books that are, Kind of duds. Let's see. Hercules. I mean, I don't know how bad of a book it is, but it's nothing that's fantastic right now. Hercules number two. Right there. But not in bad shape. Uh, you know, I got some, I got a, I got, you know, Judge Dredd. They're not, these are not duds, but they're just, they're not, you know, they're not super huge. They're not super huge uh, books everybody's looking for, right? It's Judge Dredd. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, there's another spot. It's not a dud, but another spawn book. And it's in really nice shape too. Uh, what else? Dud. Dud. I'll go through a few more here. Well, oh, these aren't duds. Like, oh, oh my gosh. Look what I forgot to show you guys. <laughs> You want another big DC book that's in this box? <laughs> totally forgot. Three fifty nine. First Batgirl. That's probably around a five and a half, four and a half to. F it's got a lot of creasing up in the corner here. Where is it? Right there. But it's still, it's a solid book, though. I, I remember buying this book. I think I paid maybe $100 for this book. And I bought it off a local guy. He had a collection. A guy had actually, um, this, oh my gosh, it was an amazing find. This guy was buying lockers, like, you know, Storage Wars. And he was working at a locker facility. And um, he went he went to buy some lockers. And he saw, when they opened it, the, you, you can't go in the lockers. Just like the show, you can't go in the lockers. You can only watch or see from the from the door, right? And he saw all these uh, LPs, like records, like old records, you know, albums. And he said, you know, he, and he, it's all he saw was like walls of records. So he bid. He said he paid 
$2,000 for the locker. He was bidding against another guy and he gets in there and takes down all the records and behind the records are like, you know, 25 long boxes. And that was one of the books. You can imagine the other, I bought a lot of books off him. Um, but yeah, he had a lot of keys. It was pretty awesome. And he also, not only did he get comic books, he also got a whole bunch of Star Wars stuff, like actual 35 millimeter, um, the, the, the reels for the trailers, the actual Star Wars trailers and the reels, Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back, and Star Wars. He, he, he was an amazing find. I think in the end, he said he ended up making something like $20,000 profit on it. And he, he wasn't a comic book collector. He wasn't a, you know, a, a guy into Star Wars or even albums. He bought it to sell the albums. And he, he, he had a, quite a bonus. So that's where that, detect, that's where that uh, first back row came from. Uh, what else is going on there? Uh, I know a great pressure to fix. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, look at this. Two more, two more of these. I forgot those were in there too. Not many duds, I guess. Hey, eh? let me see. Uh, oh, there's, you know, some new mutant stuff, you know, like this. Nothing fancy. Number 27. What else? You know, got some legends. You know, these are pretty big for a while there. This one was, or this one was, I think, for a while. Uh, you know, X-Force. And, of course, you got to have and no collection's complete without X Factor. I, I think there was a. I think I have about twenty copies of X Factor. Are they going up yet? They probably will at some point. Anything else in here? Uh, nothing much. Well, you know, DC versus the Marvel Universe. You, know, you got all that kind of stuff in there. Oh, and look at this book. Oh, look at this. That's cool. It's not in a bag and board. And look at this. Look really close. Signed by Todd McFarlane. Look at that. See that right there? Can you see the sign there, right there? See the Todd signature? So unfortunately, this is going to have to go to CBCS or just sell it as is not the next guy do it. Because I really don't want to send books to CBCS. Uh, selling. You're talking about the, the back row book? No. These are my, these are book, guys, these are books I actually bought for the most part to keep, not to sell. There's, you know, those, those uh, Deadpool books. I have tons of them. So I'd probably sell one or two of those. Um... Yes, they are hot on cover price, about eight bucks USD. <laughs> what else? Carnage. Right here, look at this. Carnage number one. That's got to be worth what? Not much? No idea. No idea. Oh, look. oh my Lord. Guys, I must have skipped over a few things here because there's another... Another couple of nice ones here. I got a nice uh, Strange Tales, 180, first uh, Gamora. Nice. And that's a nice shape, too. That's like a, that's a nine, that's a nine, four, nine, six. And I saw something else here, too, that was kind of cool. Nice. A, ni a really nice copy of Venom Lethal Protector. I didn't even think I had a copy of that. So that's pretty cool. Again, things I picked up, I had no idea I picked up. Crazy. Oh, yeah, Wayne, what kind of grade? So uh, Wayne says he picked up a nice copy of the first back girl as well. Curious as to what kind of grade you had with that. That Warlock is nice. Um, I might have another one for sale. Again, guys, um, holy cow. Did I make a live stream? Yes, Sean, you sure did. Welcome. I don't, I'm probably not going to be on much longer. I, you got to go back and see. I pretty much went through a short box of books and picked out some of the some of the nice things I've, I've uh, found over the last several years. And uh, I have another, I think, two or three short boxes stuffed away. I'll do another one of these in the future. And uh, uh, there's more stuff, believe me. There's more stuff. Uh, guys, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a hoarder too. I like my comics and uh, I like my key books. There was a time when I was... I was only doing runs. I could do an ASM run. I was doing a Fantastic Four run. I was doing a Daredevil run. And I just kind of got out of the runs because the main reason, they just take up so much damn room. They just take up so much room. Uh, um, you know? Uh, so I, ha I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't do it anymore. Back roll, grade oh, 2.5. Well, it's okay. It's still, a, that book's hot, man. It's a hot book. Uh, you know? Nothing wrong. I mean, 
Like if we're buying, as far as investment goes, you know, obviously the higher grade books seem to really catapult value wise. But as the higher grade ones go up, the lower grade ones go up too. I have an AF15, it's a 1.8. I got rid of my 3.5. I'm still kicking myself on that one. But anyways, whenever like a, a 9.6 of AF15 hits a new milestone, all the grades go up. Um, I think a, a 1.8 of an AF15 is now going for over 20,000 US. I think it's 20, 22,000 US, right? And it's gone up almost $7,000 in the last year so. Yeah, low grades are okay. Nothing wrong with that. What do you guys use for pricing reference? I use cover price for mine. Uh, Wayne, I, I, I pretty much use a couple of things. I use uh, right now Go Collect, and I use uh, eBay pretty much. Um, and uh, I did use GP for a long time. I like, I like Go Collect is prettier than GP analysis, but I think GP analysis is a little more accurate. It's more up to date in terms of the sales. And GP's average kind of throws me off. I'm not sure how they come to their averages sometimes of, of their values, but that's what I'm currently using. Um, I just, a, kill, a, fra, a oh, first team Titans. Oh, Raven Cyborg and what's her name? Uh, Raven Cyborg and Starfire, I think you mean. Comic Boom. Love your channel. Thanks, Comic Boom. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for popping by. Uh yeah, you know, keys are the way to go, Stavros. Like Stavros said, you just started collecting keys in 2012. And I'm, I think I, I made a decision. Uh, before I started pressing for, for the public, I did a, a massive, um, I guess you could say purge. And I took all my spider. I, I was kind of lucky. Most of my books were, um, actually, I sold a lot of my stuff off to a local comic store a long time ago, but the guy pulled out all the keys for me, which was fantastic. You know, first Deadpool, first Carnage. He gave me all those and I sold him my runs of X Factor, my runs of, you know, West Coast Avengers, my whatever. He bought all that modern 80s garbage that I had. Um, and he let me keep all the keys and he gave me a good dollar. So I was quite happy, but I kept my run of Spider-Man. And about, oh, probably about 10 years ago, I had like three, uh, two and a half long, two and a half long boxes of Spider-Man keys and I found another collector locally who was trying to do this ASM run. And so we did a dollar for dollar trade. It was, we basically sat down together. We figured out what everything was worth. And uh, his books were graded. Mine were not. And out of that deal, he got like a, pretty much a full long box of ASM books. And I picked up, you know, uh, Hulk 181, Hulk 180, Hulk 182, Giant Size X-Men 1. I picked up, I think that's where I got actually that Falcon, first Falcon and Captain America 100 in here was from that same deal. Uh, so I was quite happy. He, he gave me a lot of good books that have gone crazy in value. And the 180, and what, the 180 was a 9-0. The 181 was a 7-5, which I've upgraded to an 8-5. And the, nine, the 80, 182 was like a friggin' 9.2. So that was pretty sick. And the Giant Size X-Men 1 is an unpressed 8.5. So yeah, I was pretty happy with it at that time. Yeah, Stavros has got an amazing collection, guys. An amazing collection. That's right, Wayne. Low grade is better than no grade. That's 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 the way to look at it. Uh, cover price, go collect key collector. Yeah, you, you got to go everywhere, guys. You know, I did my I did that uh, my last claim sale the other the other day, and I had a Doctor Strange number one. I let it go for I think four hundred and. For 400 or 425, it's a Doctor Strange, the second the second series from the 70s, and it was a 9.4, and I thought I'd priced it accurately. It got picked up quickly, and then uh, I checked the pricing, and they're like going for 600, so I, I missed it. I missed it, right? So the guy got a great deal on it. Um, uh, Colin Smith, yes, yeah, Starfire. Only run I have is ASM. It's a popular one, man. Uh, you're not alone. A lot of guys are going for that ASM one. I, I think I might go back and try to do an ASM one to like, you know, 20, you know, one to 30 or all, all, you know, or just before Ramita comes in. I think Ramita comes in in, uh, is it 39? Is it 39 and 40 Ramita? I forget. I forget, but, uh, I might, I might do it. I don't know. We'll see. Or I'll just keep doing the, the keys. Man, I have I have all the Marvel keys. I'll do a video one day of all my. I'll bring my books in and I'll and I'll do like uh, 
I'll, I'll show off all my all my uh, Silver Age keys that I have. I think you'll be really impressed. It took me, it's taken me as long as I've been pressing and cleaning to do it. And um, and I think the only reason I've been able to accumulate those books is because I've been in a, in a, in a position of like um, meeting people who had the books to sell and what have you and um, and the trade and whatever, right? So I was able to get all those uh, Marvel keys. I don't know. I want my uncanny X-Men run. LOL. Everything else I sell or keep some keys. Yeah, the, the, the X-Men are awesome too. And But unfortunately, they uh, fortunately if you have them all, but unfortunately if you don't, they've gone crazy too, right? The X-Men books have, have gone absolutely mental. You know? Got Strange Tales 110. Yeah, ugly book, that Strange Tales 110. I've got a copy too. It's such a... You know, Strange Tales 110 and the, uh, what do you call it? Um, Tales to Astonish 27, the first uh, Ant-Man. They're not the nicest covers, right? But they're significant books nonetheless. I've got more for you to press when you can. Just got ASM 25 and 50. Ah, oh, 50. Yeah, I've got a 50 somewhere as well. And another stash somewhere. Yeah, those are two nice books as well. Show off. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, it takes time. And I hear people oftentimes say, oh, I'll never be able to get it. I don't believe you'll never be able to get it. It's, you know, it's funny. I got my, the Hulk number one that I, I picked up, I traded for it. And again, I mentioned earlier, the ASM 194 uh, that I traded away to get it. Um, the ASM 194 at the time when I traded, it was worth like maybe $2,000, but I didn't pay 2000 I paid like maybe 50 bucks for that book, right? Because that's all the book was worth at one point. So if you play your cards right and you pick up the right books uh, at the right price, even books like, look at the Ultimate Fallout 3s. If you were one of those people that picked up 20 copies of, and I know guys who have like 20, 30 copies of Ultimate Fallout. I can show you actually. I have another guy here. His, his, his name's coming up soon. I feel bad because I feel bad for everybody who's waiting. And by the way, if you're waiting for books, guys, thank you so much for your patience. It's I hate being this backlogged. I, I wish I could clone myself out to get this going. I often think about bringing people in to help me, but I don't, no one wants anybody else to work on their books but me. So that's, that's unfortunately the situation that we're in. I have to work on the books. I work on them uh, slowly uh, because I want to make sure they're, they're done right. And that takes time. But again, I want to thank all of you who've been patient and been waiting. I know a lot of you have been waiting since April. I'm working on the April books now. I'm going through them nicely. Um, but it does take time. And I, another, uh, what I was trying to say is I have another fella here who has, I think seven copies of, of uh, Ultimate Fallout 3, and they're all graded, 9.2, 9.0, 9.4, and I'm going to crack them, I'm going to clean them all up, and uh, if you watch uh, Jordan's channel at Basement Collectibles, he just did uh, an unveiling last week, on fr uh, last Friday, he uh, had um, an Ultimate Fallout graded a 9.0, I took it, cracked it, and I, uh, I pressed it, it came back a 9.8. That book has room, lots of potential for, for, for huge grade bumps. So the fellow that's got all the ones here, you know, there's a good chance he's going to take these books and turn them into $2,500 books. And he's got seven of them. So if he wanted, he could sell those books. He could buy a major, he could buy an AF-15 or he could buy a Hulk number one, right? So I, I don't, people all never have that book. Don't say that. I don't believe that you'll never have the book. You never know what opportunities will present themselves, guys. You'll never, never know. Uh You've got more for you to... Okay, I read that already. Okay, patience equals paper. That's right. Just be patient. It'll come your way. Yeah, you know, well, you never know it, Wayne. Stavros, patience. I got a raw Hulk 81 off Kijiji for, for 1950. Kevin cleaned it and pressed it. Came out a six. Wow. Marco Coletta, how you doing? Yeah, Marco, I know. Uh, you know what? If you were here last, uh, on my last, my son came on here. And he uh, he was being a bit of a, a clown on the chat using under my name. Uh, he's he's really interested in doing it, but I don't think my clients would want an eleven year old working on books. Am I right? I'm right. So he's almost there. He's getting to you know he's uh, he's still a kid, but uh, he's really eager to start. I'm going to start getting him working on some old my old books and get him cleaning for me. I have a guy locally who cleans for me, but he's got another job too, and he's an excellent. He's been doing it for me for like about four years, and he's an excellent cleaner. He's delicate. He knows which what papers to be very careful on because I'm going to tell you most of the damage uh, to a book happens not when it's in the press it had or well, damage sorry damage never happens what I'm, tr what I'm trying to say is if damage is going to happen that's a better way of phrasing it guys if damage is ever going to happen to a book 
It's not going to happen while it's in the press. It's more likely going to happen when you're cleaning the book. That's what I was trying to say. Um, and uh, he's been doing it for me for a while, and he works on the most delicate books, and he does a fantastic, fantastic job. Unfortunately, he, uh, you know, he has a family and a mortgage, and uh, he needs a full time job. So he can only work, you know, kind of like odd jobs for me. If I get overrun with a big, a big order, I'll give him a big order, and he'll work through it, and it'll, it'll help me a little bit. But like I said, my son, when he's you know 13, 14, 15, hopefully he'll jump in and give me a hand. Uh, I think Kevin can make a lot of money and offer a five thousand dollar internship uh, when you pay him to get to get the skills. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it just takes time. I'm hoping that, guys, once I get caught up here, uh, my backlog will be like maybe a month. That's where I want to be. I want to have like a, like a month, be behind by about a month. I don't, I don't like this. This, this happened, guys, in, in in March and April. I'm t- I, was, I was, as you know, I'm a teacher, so I was doing. Uh, I was, I had two classes going on, and I, I had to be in front of my class, obviously during the day. And uh, when that was over, I found by nighttime I, I couldn't do a lot of, at the, in the evenings. I was, I was just kind of burned out from the from the online classes. And uh, and and what and a remarkable thing happened in April, March and April. I was absolutely inundated with. I I never saw FedEx at my house so much. It was crazy. I had so many books coming in. Uh, my my dining room was like full of, of boxes. It was crazy. So that that's what's happening. I'm getting through them now though. And again, thanks for your patience, guys. Those that are are still waiting. I know Marco is waiting or Wayne. Wayne's gonna be pretty happy though because I saw I, I saw your invoice. I think it might be. You, you keep your eye on what's in the press, Wayne, because it's coming, my man. It's coming. Uh, <laughs> anybody else? Uh, what we got here? Yeah, and if I had a proper facility, like if I had, like the office that I have right now, for those that are local, and I'm there Saturdays from 11 to 1 if you want to come in and say hi, um, is more of a place to meet and greet, pick up books, drop off books, right? But most of the, well, the work is not done there. It used to be, but you know, I had an apprentice, believe it or not. I was, that was my whole intention to have an apprentice or two and have them, you know, work under me, but it didn't work out. It, it was more time more time fixing the problems that were being made uh, than getting work done, right? And uh, it was it was a bit frustrating. But if I had a like a big facility and I and I could bring three or four people in, yeah, I'd love to. But again, people need living wages. I don't know if I I, I have to do. I have to see if this works on my own first. You know, I know guys in the states do this for a living. I don't know what kind of living they're making. If it's a, a good living, uh, you know, I want to make a good living, obviously. Uh, and, um, you know, that's why I'm, I'm taking a sabbatical from teaching come September, as you all probably already know, and I'm going to give this a full-time shot. And if it, if it becomes, uh, if it's, if it's doable, then I'll, then I'll, I'll make some moves maybe, you know, otherwise I'll go back to teaching again and do this part-time as I did and, and go into my retirement slowly, you know, and, uh, what have you. But, uh, yeah. How many presses do I have? Well, you can see behind me, I have one there, another one over there, uh, which ones do you see? Yeah, two big ones. These guys behind me, yeah, they're open because I was working. I'm all hot as hell in here, guys, right now. Um, I just finished before I did my stream, so I finished for the night. Um, these guys are the 650s. These guys are sort of the 550Ts. They're, they're big. You can get nine comic books in each. So 18 books in these. And I have two smaller ones. I got one back there, and I got two. Let's go like this here. These guys got one there, and I got one back there. Those are the same. Those do two books each. And then over there, I have another two-book press, and I got a single-book press. And I have another big 550TO in my storage in case one of these guys goes kaputs. And I have another two-book pre- two press also as backup in case something goes wrong. You got to have backups. These are all used presses. This one behind me over here, though, is gorgeous. This, this is actually not a very old one. This is a digital press. I do all the modern books in that press. I can really control the temperature in it nicely. And it's an awesome press. It's a, but that's a, that there, that there's a $5,000 press right there um, to buy it. And it's maybe three years, four years old, this one. It's a beautiful one. All the other ones are old. Like probably 10, 20. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if the ones behind me are like 30 years old. And they're, they're, they could be temperamental. You have to fix the, you know, take the thermostat out and clean the thermostat off and put it back in and recalibrate it. Uh, but I've, I've come to, I figured out how to do all that. I might do a video on that because I know a lot of dudes use these presses in the back, the, the clamshell ones here. They call them the, 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 the fisheye, they call them the fisheye uh, presses. They got the green and red lights on them. 
they're actually really good presses. And if you ever want to do pressing yourself, guys, these are, these are a great press to, to start off with. But if you're going to buy one, make sure the pad is in good shape. <clears throat> make sure the pad's in good shape because if the pad is no good, you're going to pay 100 bucks for a pad. Um, so, yeah, make sure the pad's in good shape. And then I might do a video on how to clean the thermostat and, and calibrate it because the thermostats, you can't buy them anymore. There's one place you can buy them and they're running out. But the thermostat's $175. You know, so I know how to fix them um, to make them work anyways. Uh, anyway, I'll do a video on that one day probably. This is exactly like art restorers. It requires highly skilled work and you should get paid well for it. But that internship is a good idea. You know, um, you know, I felt it was very important when I took an apprentice on. I wanted somebody with uh, art restoration skills. And I'll be honest, I had one lady... Uh, was coming had contacted me from Paris, France, and she worked at the Louvre in France, and she wanted to immigrate to Canada. Her and her husband and her kid. And uh, I explained to her what I was doing, and um, she seemed pretty. Um, I'm gonna turn my volume down. I think it's too loud. There we go. She seemed really eager to to work with the comic books, and she was she worked on like she worked on like Da Vinci's for crying out loud, and you know uh, ancient paper and whatever. And when I showed her what I was doing, she was very interested in doing it, but she 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 couldn't get here for six months and then she wanted to live in Toronto because her whole family was in Toronto. And I said, we have to get to, you know, commute into Oshawa and she wasn't driving yet. And it was just a big kind of hassle. I know she's in Toronto now and I think she ended up becoming a French teacher, but man, I was so excited to get her to work as she, man, man, to have someone with that kind of background to me, if you don't guys, if I'm not working on your books, you're going to know that someone who's worked, you know, at the Louvre and from, from Paris is working on your comic book. I think you're going to feel okay. You know, work, she's, she's worked on priceless works of art. And uh, that was really exciting. But unfortunately, it did not work out. And she actually, her background, actually, especially was working on like um, 18th century posters. Like posters from like the, um, from the uh, French Revolution, you know, that time period and up into the 1800s and 1900s. So it was very exciting. That didn't work out. So I contacted Sir Sanford Fleming because they actually have an art restoration program there. I had a couple of friends that did that program. And... Um, I contacted the, the 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 person in charge there, and I explained. I look, I have a, I need a young person who's got experience with paper. I, I have a full time job for them, and I'll train them to you know, and they can bring them what they've learned from uh, from your school or whatever. They weren't taking me seriously. They didn't think I was a serious. They're like, oh, comic books? What are you talking? I'm like, oh my god, you have no idea how big this industry is. And finally, after two years of bugging them, they sent me somebody who told me they were really fond of comic books. And they weren't. And uh, that lasted about a month. I spent two weeks training, oh, about a week training them, and then a week coming in and working with them one on one to make sure, to show them where they were going wrong and how to fix certain things. And they were they were just they wanted to get the, the books done really fast. They didn't have the patience to 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 look and find problems that could continue that could get the books that could get better. You know the the big thing about comic book pressing is knowing when to say this book is done. Or knowing when to say no, I can make, I can fix this problem. That's a really, that's that's a really important skill to have to know that, okay, I'm done. I can walk away. Like Kenny Rogers says, you know, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. Right? You have to know when to say I'm done. And this person was saying I'm done way too quickly. Um, the reason was is I was paying them per book, right? So hey, if I get 50 books done today. I'm going to make a lot more money than if I get 25 books done today. But I try to tell them you don't want to you don't want to do more than twenty to thirty books per day. If you're working full time, thirty books a day to me is a lot. It's a lot of books actually. I, I'd feel better even less than that. Uh, when I do this, in, when September rolls around, I've allocated myself seventeen books, sixteen to seventeen books per day. That's it. I don't want to do more than that. That's why I'm working. I'm 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 burning the candle on both ends right now, trying to get as much done as I can, so when September rolls around, I can get that into a routine. And when five o'clock comes up, I'm done. I'm with the family at that point. That's what I'm trying to do. So hopefully I can get there. I've rambled on. Sorry about that. Um, I'm not worried about waiting. I'm just happy to know you're engaged with your community. So I trust the books are in safe hands. Well, that's why I did this. And that's another reason why I started up this YouTube channel, right? What better way to let people know who you are, first of all, and, and to also let people know that uh, I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm working on books. You know, that, that's important. And I, I thought, what a great way to let people know that you're still, that you're there, you know. 
Um, I, I, cause I know these things mean a lot to all of you, right? I'll tell you, I know the feeling when I set my first, I set my first two books to CGC like 12 years ago. I said the amazing Spider-Man number one and Avengers number one, they're big books and an ASM 129, all my biggest books. I sent them to CGC. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I, I sent them in. I, I used can't, I used UPS, I think at the time. Uh, anyways, the whole time the books were gone, I was, I was freaking out. So I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Um, and to have guys come over and give me an AF-15 and trust me with that. Or I have guys, I've had, I've had, I've worked on, I, guys, you don't see some of the books I work on. I don't advertise everything. I, I don't, I have some guys who don't want me to show off the books. And they'd say, don't, don't put it on your show. And I'd say, no, no problem. I won't. Um, <clears throat> they don't want their books to be seen. But I've worked on on crazy, crazy books like the, the you know, and, and I, I'm so appreciative and honored that people choose me to do that. And, and I take it very seriously. Um, <clears throat> so, again, thank you for that. Uh, you know, I appreciate that, Shane. That's a great. Um, uh, let's see here. Or Marco. I called you Shane. Sorry, I got another I got another customer called Shane Collette. So thanks for that, uh, Marco. Uh, Stavros, do you make your own T-shirts? Huh? These are not t-shirt presses. I don't use t-shirt presses. That's for the other guys. I don't know. T-shirt presses are for the birds. These are works of art. I think people are really starting to realize that art and our history of human time periods. Yeah, I think so too. And that's why the high grade stuff is so valuable, right? Because um, because uh, there's so little of it, right? And that's why they become so they become so popular, for sure. Um, it is works of art. Uh, my wife loves my comics because of the art. And you know what? That's what got me into comic books. I, I'll be honest. I'm not... Well, okay, the storylines are great. I've never been much of a reader. For me, it was always the artwork, you know? Um, going to my buddy's house. You, if you guys have ever watched my... Uh, I do the review of... Um, of uh, What do you call it? Uh, not Loki. Did we do Loki? I think we did Loki. Or I did Loki. He helped me out with The Winter Soldier. Adam. My buddy Adam Sakura. He, he, he got me to comics way back when I was in grade nine. And I, I remember going to his house and, and looking at the John Byrne X-Men stuff. That John Byrne X-Men stuff was awesome. And I, I was really partial to Steve Ditko's artwork in, um, in Spider-Man and Romita as well. I loved all the Spider-Man artists, the early stuff. But the Ditko stuff just spoke to me. So the artwork was really what grabbed me. You know, if the cover was awesome. I'm buying that book. You know, I loved it. And the story was always secondary, I guess. Maybe not so much anymore, but back then it was. It was the artwork for sure. Sean, you really need to find a collector to train them. They have to be invested in the hobby industry too. Easier said than done. Yes, and, and that's it. You know, you need somebody who knows how to handle a comic book. You know, that's that's important too. But I also have to trust these people because these are your books. And I don't want to give your book to this guy or your book to that guy. That's that's my biggest problem. You know, I have guys, oh, Kevin, oh, you know, I'll come and do the books. I'll bring them to my place and I'll work. No, 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 no. Uh, you know, I had that when I bought that shop. The whole point was I had, well, that shop was insured. You were insured while you were in that shop. Once you take your books to your house, I don't think so. I'm not letting, I'm not letting someone take your books out of here. The only place your books are going are here. And then they're going to FedEx and they're going to CGC. And they're coming back to me and then back to you. That That's the way it's going to be. And that's, again, guys, why, why it takes more time. I think expanding and having more people will speed things up, but I think we'll also cause problems. It'll also cause problems for sure. I guarantee it. And, that, and that's, you know, Hey, I, I had to start charging HST because I, I've gotten to this point where I'm so big now, um, or bigger, I should say that's causing me stress. More things I have to do. I have to get my pe my paperwork has got to be on the ball. And that's more, more things I didn't want to deal with. I was happy not charging HST because it was just, I'd have to deal with that nonsense. And now I have to deal with that. It's just some, another part of, you know, when you grow, when you bring employees in, that's another stress. Another thing you have to consider, right? Canada, you know, taxations. And oh my God, is it something I even want to do? Guys, I'm turning 50 this year. Do I want to start dealing with all that at this point? I don't know. I see myself doing this for five more years and then calling it quits. To be honest, I don't want to be doing this. At 55, I think I'd rather be doing my own books or looking for more collections or, or buying and selling more so than than this because this, this is stressful too, right? Obviously, it's a job. Um, when I'm when I'm retired, I want to retire. What I do it part time, maybe or for the odd person here and there, <clears throat> yeah. But I don't think it's something I want to do till I'm 75. I don't think so. I don't think my eyes are going to work that long, anyways. To be honest with you, you really need to find a collect. Yeah, but I do agree. A collector, someone who knows comic books, is is critical. Critical. 
Hello, 3B man. How are you? Gilbert, quality and over quantity. That's it. And that's why I appreciate you guys being patient with me. I, I, I'm telling you. I'll tell you. I did a whole bunch of... You saw my Instagram today of all those Star Wars books. Um, I spent... They went in the press. Most of them went in the press three times. These are modern books. I'm just not satisfied with one press. Sometimes not two. And if there's, if there's something stubborn there, I want it fixed. It goes back in again. And I think you'll appreciate me doing that for your books too. You know, that's the thing. When I get there, it's not going to be a quick press. It's going to go in. It's going to get done. It's going to get done right. And I'm going to stop only when I think the book cannot be improved anymore. Or if I think the grade's not going to be improved anymore. Well, funny, like, look at this. This is one of, I, I think I showcase this on what's in the press. This is Zach's, this is one of Zach's books on Jackie Robinson. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to press this book. I cleaned it. It was really kind of grimy, so I cleaned it. A press is not going to help that book. A press could damage it. You know, it's brittle. It's, it's, I don't think a press is going to get that book any higher of a grade than it's going to get the way it is. It's going to go to CGC like that. But I gave it a quick clean. It's done. That's it, right? But if the book, if a press was going to help that book, it would go in the press. But I'd, I just weighed the options. I don't want to press that book. I think it's just more, you're asking for trouble. Uh, valuable and sentimental. That's right. Kevin, my first submission was huge with you. I see the passion via your channel. Well, thank you, Stavros. Again, yeah, well, and again, I appreciate it. I, I know it's nerve wracking. And I've had fellas, I had another fella out in Alberta send me an ASM one. Um, and again, guys, if you're sending me a big book like that, if I'm getting an ASM one or an X-Men one or a giant size X-Men one, they get done usually pretty quickly. Right? I don't, I don't keep them around too long. Uh, because they're big books and I know you're freaking out while they're here. So I want to get them off to CGC. Um, I know Brent out in uh, Nova Scotia sent me, I think uh, it was four or five really big books. I had those done in a month for him. They were back in his hands and up within a month. You know, I did, I did them quickly. They're off to CGC and I had, they were all walk through and they were back in his hands. I think a month, not more than, not more than four and a half weeks, right? Books like that, obviously. And I'm going to do something different st starting soon as well, too. Because I know a lot of guys don't submit like 20 books. I, I, I do have guys who give me uh, short boxes. Hi, Angelo. If Angelo's watching out in, uh, in Montreal, Angelo likes to drop off two short boxes. That takes me forever. And I feel bad, but it's just the way it is. It's a lot of books to get through. Um, but a lot of guys give me two books or one book or three books. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to create a second. Uh, I don't have my, do I have my binder here? No, I don't think I have my binder around here anywhere. No, nah, it's put away. But I've got a binder where I keep all the invoices. I'm going to, maybe tomorrow or the next day, pull all the invoices with like one, like under five books. Nah, probably under three books. Under three books. And I'm going to collect those. And when I hit, when I get like 20 books combined with like small orders, I'm going to do them. That way, these guys are not waiting for like, you know, months for one or two books. I, I always feel bad about that you know i just kind of treat everybody like come first come first serve and that's cool but i think if someone's got like one book or two books i try to get them done quick um i want to get them i want to get them done quicker and out of here and also gets rid of the gets, gets them out of here quickly too and i can focus on the bigger books more at one time not the bigger books the bigger orders i mean sorry yeah that's something i'm gonna think hey jamie how's it going you're not late you're not late at all guys it's jamie the last winner of my 600 subscriber draw congratulations again jamie thanks for dropping by this is an impromptu video guys uh that's all it was i wasn't uh i wasn't planning on being on here for too long i had to get going pretty soon actually i had to pick my wife up she's at a at a work party uh, oh yeah i gotta i gotta go soon let me just respond to my wife oh <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so you're not late, Jamie, not at all. Next time I'm, I'm in your shop, I'll show you my artwork. Yes, I love to see your artwork. Guys, uh, you know, my degree, my degree as well, maybe you are as well. I went to the University of Toronto and shared in college for, uh, for art and art history. So I, I specialized in, in, in my, my degree is in visual arts. I was a painter and I was a, more of a painter than anything else. Um, wasn't very good at doing comic books, to be honest with you. I was more of a painter. But I haven't picked up a paintbrush in years. And I, I you know, maybe that's something I'll do <laughs> after all this. Get back to my to my roots, right? Uh, you know, Paul, how's it going, Paul? I'm 57 and I'm retiring the end of this year. So I get, yeah, you know, when it's time, it's time, right? 
people always say to me, oh, you, you press comic books. That's a great thing to do when you retire. My other, my teacher friends would say that. My teacher friends, oh, that'd be a great thing to do when you retire. No, when I retire, I want to retire. I want to go to, you know, I want to go to Florida. I want to go to, well, if we can go to Florida or the, to Nevada or wherever, uh, or Arizona or Europe. I don't want to be, you know, slaving away on comic books. I, I want to do it when I want to do it, you know? Um, interested in to see, uh, what you can do with my Vampirella number one. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. 3B man. Who are you again? Remind me. I think I know who you are. We've talked. Great discussion. Thanks, Dav. Good luck with the wife. <laughs> oh, she's having a good time, I'm sure. I'll, I'll get out there in a, in a moment. U of T Woodworth's College. Yo, I remember you, Woodsworth. I was at Arendale out in, out in Mississauga, and then I transferred to St. Mike's, and I was at St. Mike's for the remainder of my degree. Uh... The program at Arendale at Mississauga was better. But at the time, this is going back to like 1991, Mississauga, where I was, Mississauga Road, you were in the middle of the forest. If you wanted to go to McDonald's or go see a movie, you weren't going. And all my friends were downtown, at, were near Woodsworth, obviously down on, uh, down right downtown Toronto. So I transferred as soon as I could. And uh, I did my, I finished off my degree downtown. You know what I miss most about U of T is all is, is the uh, outside. Of, you remember Sid, Sid Smith Hall? I'm sure you do. Woodworth was down the street on Sid Smith's Hall there. There used to be a, a food truck there with Asian food, and they sold these amazing dumplings. Oh, I, those are so good. I remember, I remember those. Ah, good times. Luke, I knew it was you, Luke. Yes. Hi, Luke. <laughs> I was pretty sure it was you. Um, yeah, we're going to get there soon, my man. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. But, uh, hey, guys, listen, I, I better take off because I do have to pick my wife up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to take off. I got I to go pick her up. But, listen, thanks so much for popping by. We've got 15, 16 people on here. That's great. That's not bad. I don't mind doing these little impromptu. I'll do another one of these short box videos uh, maybe in a, in a couple of weeks if I get a moment or two. Um, I've had people ask if we can come on and do just like discussions you know, about pressing and collecting. Happy to do that as well, too. Um, I'm also curious to know what you think about, um, what, what, what would you like to talk about in this channel? I do what's in the press. I do unboxings. I'll do things like this. Are there other types of videos? What are you guys into? Like, I'm also, I'm also into toys. I love my toys. I, I love Star Wars toys and Masters of the Universe toys. I've got a whole bunch of really cool toys. I, I, I like talking toys. Uh, and I'm also a big movie buff. Like I can talk movies all day long. Um, my idea for my, like I was going to do, I had a movie channel going with some students of mine and I was thinking about bringing it over here as well too. It was called the, the, the film club and I, I love talking movies, but I would, I always thought it'd be pretty cool is to bring somebody on to talk with like one of you, if you guys are into, say, if we want to talk about, I don't know, uh, you know, Pulp Fiction, I just, first thing that came to my mind, you know, maybe I'll, I'll talk about Pulp Fiction with one of you guys and we'll bring you on the screen with me. We can shoot the shit about Pulp Fiction, what we liked about or or didn't like about it or whatever, or any of the move, new movies that are coming out. So I've got a lot of ideas. Don't get me wrong. I don't have tons of time to do that, obviously, but maybe when these this settle, when the, when the pressing gets under control, that's something I'd like to do. I'd love to build this channel up and the community here. YouTube's a lot of fun. I, I love this. I'm also a drama guy too, right? I taught drama for how many years? So I love to talk. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, I like to talk. Uh, but uh, anyways talk more about what comics to speculate on. I don't know what comics to speculate that's something I'm not good at um, I have asked other guys that are much better at speculating to come in and talk I do have that other show that I have on the comics you you need and I talk about books you might want to look for but there are guys out there um, like Bry's Comics you probably heard of Bry's Comics he, he, he does this whole speculation um, actually, uh, the basement collectibles does speculation as well, too. He'll talk about modern books that you, you might want to pick up. I have guys, I, I, I collect comics. I don't collect modern books. In fact, I got out of collecting because of all the nonsense that was going on with modern books back in the, in the nineties, when you'd go to the comic store, there'd be 10 copies of one book, 10 different covers, and you didn't know what to buy. That used to drive me crazy. So I, I pretty much gave up collecting new books at that point, And I pretty much collect only vintage books. I'm into silver age, sorry, gold and silver and bronze and some, you know, and that's pretty much it. Modern age stuff. When they started playing those games with the, you know, variant covers. And nah, I, I gave up at that point. The, 
The Burbs, the best movie ever. That Burbs is pretty good. That's Tom Hanks. Uh, talk more about what comics to speculate. We talked about that. Seeing Suicide Squad. Yes, I'm going to try to see that this weekend if I can. My wife is in a drama also. Yes. Oh, man. I, 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 uh, I, I taught drama for 15 years, musical theater for seven years. I directed, geez, how many musicals? Uh, Little Shop of Horrors, Fiddler on the Roof, uh, Tommy, the Who's Tommy. Uh, I directed uh, Into the Woods. I directed uh, what other ones? Grease. I was in Greece. I, I, I did. I, you know, uh, I was the what do you call it? Um, I directed Greece, uh, and I actually brought. I, I bought a. I, I had a, a 1962. Sorry, not a 68 uh, Ford Falcon uh, donated to the school, and my shop class cut it in half, and we put we took the engine out of it and put the front half of the car on the stage, and I wired up the lights and everything, and the car was actually up on the stage and it worked. It was awesome for Greece, and I was the um, the Frankie Valley part. You know the Frankie Valley part. I sang that song. I came. I was dressed all in white. I was the uh, the angel that came down, and uh, sang my song. But and there's a, and there's a clip of that somewhere out there. If you can find it, of me singing that song, if you're interested. <laughs> but that's it. All right, guys, I'm done. I got it. My wife's going to get mad at me if I don't go pick her up. But listen, thanks very much. Again, guys, let me know. If you want to email me, info at thecomicdoctor.com, please do so. Let me know what you would like from this channel. I'd love to hear from you, seriously. Or if you have any questions you want me to answer in a future uh, video, let me know and I'll be more than happy to do it. I know guys want me to talk about my presses. I'll do a, a close a close up look at my presses, maybe through my using my phone sometime. Things like that, happy to do it. Let me know. This channel is for all you guys, really. You know, it's for you. So let me know what you want me to do with it. Until next time, thanks so much. If you're new here, welcome. Hit the subscribe button, please, and uh, the notification button. And remember, guys, I, I hit over 700 subscribers. So thank you, everybody who has subscribed. And when I hit 1,000, there's going to be a draw. Check out the info section below for more information on that, guys. Thanks so much for popping by. Have a great night, guys. The Black Widow theater, eh, it was pretty, it was pretty dead. There was, was only like 20 of us in the theater. And Black Widow was kind of, eh, I never reviewed that one. Maybe I'll do that. We'll see. Take care, guys. Have a great night.